lot to thank God for. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to talk about worship. We was uh, we got into a little bit of it Sunday night, and uh, God was gracious to us uh, Sunday night to help us and to help us worship Him Hallelujah. Sunday night. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I just feel His presence so strong, right. and and uh, I just want to share some things because worship reveals who we are. Amen. Hallelujah. And and we'll get into that in just a minute. But uh, I, I want to share some scriptures with you here. And it comes out of the book of John, chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. If you want to stand for the reading of God's word. It says, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes, now that, that was the words of Jesus to the Samaritan woman at the well and trying to help her to understand yes, about true worship. Because she thought that one day, yes, you know, we'll be worshiping in these hills, but he was trying to let her understand that it didn't matter where you're at, that you can worship God. Amen. But you must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. You know, I know we come into to God's house and we go through worship and praise toward God, lifting his name up. Lifting his name up in the word, lifting his name up in prayer. But there's there's something about when you get alone and you worship him. Because if you get in a crowd, sometimes there's some people that want others to see them worshiping. Amen. Now I'm not accusing anybody here. I'm just saying sometimes some people or like that. Yes, but when you get alone. Yes, amen. amen. Let's, we'll get into that. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, Lord. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you stand for, Lord. Thank you for your holiness, your pureness, and your righteousness, Lord. God, you're a God to be worshipped. You're a God above all gods, Lord. All these things that we put in front of you, Lord. God, you're greater than those things. You're greater than anything, Lord. And God, you are worthy to be worshipped. You are worthy to be praised. God, help us with this message here tonight. And Father, I'll just give you all the praise and all the glory for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. So, you know, when we, we worship him. We're kind of taking our eyes off of us and we're putting it on him. Yes, amen. You know, I, you mind if I use you? You just sit right there. I just talk about you, okay? I won't try to slam you too hard. No, I'm just kidding. Brother John has a motorcycle and uh, it's a Harley Davidson, black, beautiful. You know, I was picking at him one day about, I started to move it and hide it while it was up here. And he said, please promise me one thing, that you'll never do that. <laughs> but you know, he doesn't go around talking about his motorcycle all the time. There's other things in his life that he's, that, that, that calls for his time. He loves it. He knows where it's at. He takes care of it. He babies it. But there's other things that's greater than that in his life. Amen. Amen. But if he did worship that thing, if he did, you know, all the time, every day, go out and just kind of rub those leather seats before he goes somewhere. 
and, and, and look at it and gaze at it. If that's all he talked about, if that's all he thought about, Jesus, he would be worshiping that motorcycle. Amen. We can do homes like that. We can do people like that. Yeah. We can do vehicles like that. We can do jobs like that. Amen. I mean, it's something that consumes us. Yes, Amen. Amen. I'm asking you to know what's consuming your thoughts. Yes, hallelujah. So let's let's uh, let me share this this little story. You know, God God wants us to worship. He wants us to be uh, this to be who we are. You know, it, it's, it should be who we are, whether we're here at church or whether we're at home. Now I, I'm, I'm going to say this again because uh, I mentioned it Sunday night. If you know, this is the only time we worship, or if this, or if we do not worship at home, if we do not worship here, if this is the only place we worship, then there's something wrong. Amen. There, there's something wrong with our worship. Amen. Because if all we do is come in here and worship, then it becomes a form. And, and Jesus is very much against that. In fact, he told a parable about a Pharisee and a publican or a tax collector. They went in the temple to pray. The Pharisee stood and he said, I thank God that, you know, I'm not like the extortioners, the adulterers, the, the uh, thieves, and, and all these other things. I thank God I'm not like these people. You know, he said, I, I give him tithes and, and you know, I'm, I'm thankful and all of this other stuff. He even went as far as to say, I thank God that I'm not like this publican. Amen. But that publican, that tax collector, it said, Jesus said, he wouldn't even look up. All he would do was beat on his chest and say, God, forgive me, I am a sinner. Amen. 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 And this is what Jesus said about the publican in Luke 18 and 14. He says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, which is the Pharisee. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased or brought low. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Amen. 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 So, so when, when we come into God's house, our worship in God's house should be like our worship when we're not around anyone. Amen. Worship is very important. Some people think worship is when we're singing a song. That is worship. Some, some people think that's the only time that that's, you know, they, they, I know what they're talking about, but I, I don't know, it, it kind of presents something that is a form. But you've heard of people saying, I'm ready to go to church and put my worship on. Okay? Worship should not be like something you put it on. Amen. Worship should be something that you are. Amen? Amen. It's who you are. Amen. You are a worshiper. Because it doesn't matter if you're in God's house or if you're at home or if you're right down the road. Whatever it may be, if you're walking, you know, for, for, for your help, whatever it should be, there should be times of worship in everything we do. Come on. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. One thing that I, I want to share with you, and I've mentioned it before, is... You know, worship is, the people get hung up with worship on what God does for them. That, that shouldn't be. In fact, there should be days in your life, many days, that you worship God for who He is and not what He can do. Amen? Amen? 
In Psalms 96, verse 8 and 9, it says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. It says nothing about what he can do, but it's talking about who he is. Now, I, I know we, um, that there are people, and, and you've experienced it, the only time they contact you is when they want something. Maybe I shouldn't have went there. <laughs> he even lifted his eyebrows like you did. <laughs> you, you, you know that person. You know those people. The only time they contact you is, is really when they want something from you. Um, what, if, what if you do God like that? What if we do God like that? The only time we contact him is when we need something. And you know, there's some people that their daily prayer is this. God help me. That's it. You know, if, if my wife, every time she says, honey, and that's at least 50 times a day. But if, the, if, if she just wanted something for me to do something, I would think like, what am I? Just an object, a robot to do something? Maybe I should not have went there. But I did, so let me finish this. Bear with me. And say, say that famous prayer, God help me. <laughs> Sometimes she says, honey. And I said, what? And she said, I just want to tell you I love you. You know? What about that? What if we just told God that? God, and we're we got we're all messed up. I just want to tell you I love you. Amen. Amen. And he looks and he sees you broken with tears rolling down your face. And so he looks like, so you that's all you're asking of me or saying to me. That you love me. And then when you start praising him through your tears. And then when you start giving him glory and giving him honor through your tears, through your brokenness. Mm. Reckon how he feels now. You know, I, I don't know what he does. I don't know what heaven's like. But, you know, we humans can picture things sometimes. We can imagine things. We can envision things. And I kind of would envision if we done that to God, that he would kind of turn and look at the sun. He would kind of turn and look at the angels. And he'll say, "Whoa, what about that? <laughs> Amen. You know, he, he may not do anything like that. I don't know. But I'm just, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, whoa, what about that? <laughs> Hallelujah. But what about just taking days, whether you need something or not, and just worshiping and love on him? Thank you. Let me go a step further with this. In Micah, Chapter 6, beginning with verse 6. It says, Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions 
the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He's trying to figure out what pleases God. What can I do to please God? What can I do to make Him happy? What can I do to show Him that He's the most important thing in my life? Amen. So it goes on in verse 8 and says, He has showed you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Our worship should not only be the lifting of our hands Amen. and the, the praising of his name and the prayers that we pray and the word that we read. It should be who we are Amen. and how we live. Amen. 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 That is worship to him. Yes. Hallelujah. What does he say? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Amen. That's what worship is. Yes. If you can't worship him at home, Hallelujah. why do you try to worship him here? Amen. If you can't worship him while you're riding down the road, why can't you worship him here? Whatever consumes your mind from the time you get up to the time you go to bed is what you worship. Hey, it can be anything. I've made you some things. It can be a job. It can be money. It can be relationships. It can be, uh, hey, our instruments. We can worship those. I I get on these guitar sites, uh, these blog like things, and I get on these mandolin bass guitar and all other kind of sites, and guys show off their music room. Some of them have twenty and thirty instruments hanging on the walls. And they can only play one at a time. You see what they worship. And I, I'm not I'm talking about when they show it off, they're showing off some expensive stuff. Probably the cheapest one is probably about fifteen hundred and it goes on up to five, ten thousand dollars. And it's just it's a one room with them all, and they've got humidifier in there to keep them in shape. We can, we can worship anything. So when we wake up in the morning, I know we've got business sometimes on our mind. I know we've got to do this, to do that. But where does God fit in? Where does God fit into the equation? When do you start thinking about him Hallelujah. in the day. Come on. Amen. When do you start thinking about him? Hallelujah. Worship is, is, I'm going to say it again, worship is not just coming to church and, and lifting your hands to the songs or clapping to the songs or singing to the songs. Worship does involve being fed by the minister. And, and that's what a lot of people, they would rather hear the song than the message. Even prayer time, even altar time, that's worship. Did you know giving is worship? Amen. Hey, that's a big thing. Because the, the love of money is the root of all evil. You start touching people's pocketbook and you've messed up. <laughs> Amen. God speaks about stewardship. He speaks about giving. He watched a, a, a widow woman come up and she had two mites and it was all the money she had. 
He watched people bring in money and give of their abundance. You know what he said? He said, look at this woman. They gave of their abundance. She gave all she had. That's worship. That's worship. When that woman that, that was a sinful woman broke that alabaster box, a year's wages, and she poured it on Jesus, and she started taking her hair and wiping his feet, that was worship. You hear me? There's a lot of ways to worship. But what are we worshiping? Let's learn how to worship at home. Okay? If, if you can worship at home, I'm talking about in spirit and in truth. I'm talking about giving it all, everything, giving everything you've got to your worship at home. Then you can come in here and worship in spirit and in truth. And if you do it at home, you'll make a different place in here. This will be a different place when you walk in. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It'll be a different place. Yes, amen. Worship. We can't live without it. Amen. We can't live without it. Right. Amen. And, and we don't need to every day ask God for something. We just need to come in here and give him praise and glory and honor. Hallelujah. Now, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I had I had something one time that had really messed me up. And, and I was so broken, all I wanted to do is fall before God and, and just weep. I couldn't hardly speak. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to pray. And I come into the sanctuary and, and I, I knew that something had to take place and I didn't know what to do. I tried to sing. The song just, there wasn't much to it. But I, I found a song, something I just kind of made up within my mind, within my heart. And I just began to give him glory and honor. You know, you, you think I gotta pull a good song out, one that'll really move me. You know what the, the most moving song is when you're by yourself and worshiping? It's something that just comes from your heart. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You think about this, you think about worship. Yes, hallelujah. You think about it. You think about it when you wake up in the morning. As you go through your day, when you lay down at night, you think about how can I worship God? Yes. How can I give Him praise and glory and honor? Yes, hallelujah. Whenever you do that sacrifice of praise, that sacrificial worship, that's when it moves His heart. Yes. Amen. When you don't feel like it, yes. when you can't muster it up, but you do it anyway. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Father, thank you thank for this evening, Lord. Thank you yes. for loving us. God, I don't want to put on my worship. God, I want that to be who I am. Amen. And God, I believe these people here they want that to be who they are. God, help us this evening, Lord. Help us just to be humble before you. And God, even in those times of brokenness, help us just to worship you. Help us to do that. God, I understand about the prayer. God, help me. If anybody understands that prayer, this pastor does. But God, we've got to worship you. 
We've got to lift your name up. We've got to lift your name up when no one is looking. When no one knows about it. God, we've got to get along with you and begin to praise you and glorify you. God, please help us. Please, Jesus. Help us to glorify you. You are worthy of the praise. You are worthy of the glory. You are worthy of the honor, Lord. We give you all the praise for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody need special prayer tonight?